What's up, Shredders? My name is Logan, aka Spiderhands, and welcome to an SP Reviews, where today we have ourselves the entire album from an act named Lando is Living, titled Stop and Smell the Flowers. And if we switch over to here, uh, yeah, we're going to be reviewing all 21 tracks today. So this is going to be a bit of a longer video. I've been doing a few albums recently, a few bigger ones, which is nice. I enjoy checking out tracks and hearing how they sound in a wider context. I want to mention here, you know, the featured artists are mentioned in the tracks. Um, we A lot of the production for this album was apparently done by Jimmy Hooks. So shout out to Jimmy Hooks for the production on this album, uh, with a few exceptions being the Almost There interlude, which was produced by Overdrive, who also did the vocals in it, and Resistance was produced by a different producer, as I understand it. So um, without further ado, with that out of the way, we're going to listen through each of these 21 tracks from start to finish, and we're going to hear what we think. Starting with the uh, SNSTF intro, let's go. Interesting mixture of strings and electronic sounds. I encourage you to all come and stop and smell the flowers. I don't care if you're in Austin. I don't care if you got power. I'm speaking out to everyone that know they have an hour just to give me their attention and tune into my album. Every time I drop, I'm trying to give you all a story. Honestly, I'm in it for the money and the glory, but let's be real, who isn't? I could name you off a list of millionaires and how they did it. The definition of success is hard work and I fit it. I ain't worried about the haters, I'm just worried about the mission. Doing what I gotta, never asking for permission. If they tell me I can't do it, then I gotta go and get it. That shit's in my blood, there's nothing I can do to fix it. I like the flow of the vocals, the production as well, the way the levels are mixed with the piano here. It's nice to have things come down a little bit, be a little more sort of like somber here for the vocal flow it's, it's kind of nice so every time they try to tear me down i build them up i can't settle for the working class but trust me it's all love because someone got to do it and that somebody ain't me i be running down on all my goals while you just dream i turn it to fruition while you turn into your team if you don't really like me then just say it not on screen i'm done talking put your headphones in and listen to the album audio okay so it gives you a bit of an insight into who lando's living is they're frank about their ambitions. They're talking about people who are maybe not following their dreams and comparing themselves to those. Oh, nice change there. The piano set was sounded beautiful, man. I like the tone of it. It was really, really interesting. The interest of the synths and strings at the start there, kind of capturing your attention. Then suddenly, oh, there's a transmission from Lando's living themselves. So yeah, nice. I, I liked the way things were handled there. It was nice and short. Got, not got a lot to say about it. I think we basically covered our bases here, but when you nail that first intro track and all the boxes are ticked, you know you're in for a good time. I should note as well that I've reviewed previous works from Lando is living, you know, such as um, such as Montana Magic. I reviewed that album as well. You know, like it's been great to check out his work over the years. And there's also as well as the album Lando is Living released in 2022. So it's good. There's a lot of, you know, songs within this album. But I'm hoping as long as they're at a similar level to this one, I think we're going to have a great time, at least in terms of production and vocal flow. But we've got Resistance from Lando is Living, the video. We have a total of five videos that we'll be featuring within this album review, as it's nice to have the visual aids as well. So without further ado, track number, track number two. Hang on, was that from the start? There we are, track number two. Distorted ukulele. I wrote this song for a girl who doesn't like me. Something, something about a Libra and a Pisces. I wasn't listening, if I'm being real honest. The stars and planets have nothing to do with fondness. It's how you treat me, how you real to the core. It's how you love me every day, but still want some more. It's how you pick me up when I fall to the floor. I do the same damn thing if you fall down in front of me. I mean, like the vocal 
the modulation there is is strong. You know, we were clearly very comfortable with auto tune. That's not a bad thing. It's being used stylistically here. You know, the drums are nice and bouncy. The ukulele nice and somber with an interesting last note of that uh, broken chord at the end there that we keep looping back into the main part. It's cool. Occasional accented kicks there with the combination of the 808s. It's just nice to have a bit of extra oomph occasionally, kind of wake the listener up a little bit. Because it's a very calming, soothing piece. Trust me, I know how it gets. I promise you that I am him. Whatever you want, I'll be him, 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 him. Yeah. Don't matter what you do, I got you. Don't matter what you do, I spot you. Don't matter where you go, I'll be there right with you. I won't ever leave your side. I know you're loving me right to the end. Baby, you're my ride and die. Yo. Mike. Oh. No vocal chops. I wrote this song for a girl who doesn't like me. Something, something about a Libra and a Pisces. I wasn't listening, if I'm being real honest. The stars and planets have nothing to do with fondness. I like the admission that maybe the uh, whole star sign stuff isn't as legit <laughs> as we think it is. Oh, okay. It was that was short. That was short. That just got cut. That got cut immediately. I was surprised. I was thinking it was gonna go for a bit longer, but that that that's okay. That's okay. Um, I could understand what resistance was about from the vocals. You know, you've got someone where there's a lot of physical attraction and stuff going on, but they don't really want to commit to that love, that relationship. He keeps saying how he'll be this other person that she wants and stuff like that. But you get the feeling that they broke off for reasons that aren't necessarily completely solidified or like um, transparent. And he's just trying to sort of figure out what that is and trying to come to terms with that and, and such. So it's it's that that Stop and Smell the Flowers album, is that basically him facing the reality of the situation or is he asking someone else to do that? But either way, I think that the combination of the really chilled ukulele sounds with the interesting chords and the sort of the, the da 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 is it, I'm not sure whether that's a diminished or augmented at the end, but but either way, the ukulele, the the basses, the drums, they were kind of there was a lot of oomph behind those kicks there. There was a nice amount of power behind it. But uh, the balancing was good in the mix. It was nicely uh, so surrounding you with the headphones there. And there was these interesting snare sounds like they kind of did these kind of interesting percussive tones that come occasionally there. As well as the reverb tails and stuff like that, and delay tails. I didn't mention this in the, the intro. There's like a reverb and delay on the vocals to make them a bit airier sounding in the mix. And I kind of like that. All in all, I think we're trying to create an atmosphere. There's a lot of relaxing elements, but also the kick kind of pierces that a little bit. One thing I will say before I move on, I've just gotten some water, is that I, I don't know if we needed that extra chorus near the end. I think having it kind of, we had like an interlude kind of bit or a last verse there where it sounded like we could have finished on that. But it's okay if we wanted further time to iterate that hook line and get it stuck in the listener's head. 
We've got track number three now uh, with the Lando's Living in Overdrive titled On the Rocks. Let's do that. Are we talking about alcohol on the rocks or like relationship on the rock? On the rocks, margaritas were sipping. Sunshine every time that we're kissing. Fucked up, now she'll never forgive me. Now we're done, but she'll never forgive me. I fucked up, now she'll never forgive me. I'm down bad when I roll through your city. You stayed a hundred while I only stayed fifty. I fucked it up, now that shit's sticking with me. Ah, so is this like going from resistance to this? Are we kind of giving another perspective as to why things might not have worked out? Interesting use of filtered vocals with the guitar, though. I like that. Modulated vocals up the top right edge with a bit of synth basis. It's like how the the symbols also kind of feature around the sides of the stereo field. It kind of pa pa pa. Kind of it's interesting to listen to not just because things are solid with again the the occasional keys, the guitar, bass, and drums, but also the way things are panned in the stereo field. Now we're done, but she'll never forgive me. I fucked up, now she'll never forgive me. I'm down bad when I roll through your city. You stayed a hundred while I only stayed fifty. I fucked it up, now that shit's sticking with me. And I'm writing all that melody there. It's a softer vocal style there. We're rapping, but it's like melodic rapping, isn't it? I need you now. Margaritas were sipping. So it was both. There was the thing about the margaritas on the rocks, and then we're also talking about a relationship being on the rocks. So we got two for two. That's dope. I thought that track was really well handled. So the comment I want to make, first of all, is that you know how with that On The Rocks track, we finished with Overdrive's verse and it had these wonderful vocal harmonies there and you got their perspective. And then effectively what happens is the song ended without us iterating back to the chorus. I thought that was tremendous there. Because what it's saying is we can just allow a track to be kind of through composed, or not necessarily through composed, but we can allow it to be a journey from one start to the end without having to loop back to where it was initially. I think that most listeners would not that I dis, dis not that I dislike the choruses I heard in the previous track resistance or anything like that. They were good though, so that I understand the fundamentals behind them. It's just with on the rocks. With those lovely vocal harmonies continue to being stacked and stuff like that, it's just a great way to sort of add a second twist or twist to the tune to keep it invigorating until the end of it. Because it was already quite short at 2 minutes 39. I think that On The Rocks was really well handled though. I think it's probably my favorite track so far of this album. I thought that Overdrive's vocal technique was fantastic. It was nice to have the call and responses there. It was nice that we kind of notched ourselves on top of each other in the frequency spectrum there. And Lando's Living's verses and bars and such were great too. We 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 had this wonderful sort of like resonance with the 808s as well as the drums and, and guitars and the occasional pianos as well. And there's also this uh, this kind of harmonizing note with a synth pad in the background that was a sub layer. And that was also kind of sweet sounding. I, I don't really have any massive complaints about this track. I think that it's it's good. Like the story I think is about someone who is looking at their relationship and they haven't been particularly loyal. So they think the relationship's on the rocks and they're maybe trying to repair it. They wish that they could get back together and do things that were good and stuff like that. But there have been mistakes made and they're aware there are consequences and they're just coping with that. Yeah, the production was tight as well. Really 
Really solid. We've got almost there though. Track number four for today, the interlude. Oh, minor turn with the chords. Are we down are we down tuning that piano there? What I like about this is they're iterating back on Lando's living verses. I think Overdrive is singing that part because that featured in this track as well. It's a great way to tie two pieces together and establish a connection there. Well done. Well, well done there. It's good. The piano's got a really interesting tone to it as well. Nice to have a little piano solo in there as well. Those vocals on the side there in the upper ridge there are really, um... Sorry, I'll go back a little bit so we can enjoy that. It just, it came in a little bit too late. There we go. We'll just let that run go. Yeah, I would have liked that to have been a bit longer. So not because it should have been longer, but like I would have allowed the, tr I wanted the track to kind of allow a bit more kind of space for the tail on the end of that last note. It's just kind of go boom. You know, have a bit more of a decay to it. Aside from that, never mind. I think this is probably one of my favorite tracks off the album. I love just the key focus here. I like Overdrive singing here. I think that we have this wistful kind of tone to it where we're looking back at what occurred and trying to think our way through it. There are the piano going through twists and turns at some point being a little sort of like bombastic and spontaneous. Other times coming down and being sort of like low key. The, the natural kind of journey we go through here with the vocal ooh, ooh, and up upper ridge that there is a soothing kind of upper harmonizing layer there kind of imitating some of the pads we had in the previous tracks it's just then we come to that point where we rise up and it's like we're climbing back up from the low point that we we're in having to deal with the consequences of those things we did trying to find a way out and escape i think that the freeform uh flowing sort of tempo with it we're not really sticking to a specific kind of like speed there being flexible with our rhythms is, is fantastic and i think it's just a very mature performance on that part it's great it's sobering because I think that you need tracks like this to change things up on a 21 track song album. You need to have tonal variety and again having like a keyish thing here away from the adoids, away from the drums, away from some of the lo-fi hip hop aesthetics was just some stellar stuff, you know. It allows me to be like, okay, let's hear a bit more of the rapping stuff when track number five, which is anywhere for you. But with that said, we actually have ourselves a music video for Anywhere With You, as I understand it. So let us watch that. Track number five. Flowers? Flowers are pretty. Yeah, oh, anywhere with you, anywhere. I could go anywhere with you. 
I'm not actually sure if I... I don't think I've seen Lando as living as a person before. He seems like a really kind of chill guy. It's nice. As long as I'm with you, baby. I could go anywhere with you. Anywhere would do. As long as I'm with you, baby. Anywhere, anywhere with you. I mean, I'm, I'm aware we saw him in the second the track in the music video, but I'm just commenting on that now. Take me anywhere and I was so gonna view. You could take me anywhere and I would love it with you. I ain't got much left to win, but I got plenty to lose. I need a Jameson Jarvis. She make my head spin the hardest. I want to open up them DMs, baby. Let's get it started. I need a Leah K to alleviate all this shit that I've been going through to keep me straight. It's like true. for real. Jesse, baby, I don't know the deal, but yeah. if you send me a DM, I will pull up on your heels no big deal you don't hit me back so i'm appeal they say that i'm starstruck but that just ain't how i feel yeah for real i could go anywhere with mm. you anywhere would do as long as i'm with you baby i could go anywhere with you anywhere would do as long and as then I'm with you, baby. Anywhere, yeah anywhere. yeah no that's become a point i'm familiar with we filter the drums have kind of a clicky kick and then boom with the 808s there for the first half of the chorus it's a nice way of splitting things up for sure and it's nice to have the lead guitars on the side as well like as a sub layer to the vocals their main chorus part it's good to have flexibility with the layers in the lower end or the higher end i suppose Castle, baby i'm the full package you want a man that making money and a man that be packing we talking down in the pants and then i'm up into action on any stupid motherfucker from her past that's reacting to how we do it she wanted a gentleman i knew it yeah. talking in them tongues with that pussy i'm getting fluent she wanted to plan it i told her let's get right to it ain't no point yeah. waiting we already both went through it like and I'm head over heels for girls that don't know I exist I'll probably slide in the DMs 10 out of 10 it's getting skipped man shit babe I'm sorry that that slipped you've been falling on my reach so I should probably get a grip and get some knots I don't want that bitch if she ain't hot I already made like 30 songs for this one I should stop the homies hit my phone and they telling me I should drop they know this a heater ain't no way this one gon' flop No, I thought that was well done. I thought that was well handled. Um, it was great to listen to the guitars, like the acoustic steel string guitars in this. They had a nice grounded earthy tone to them, playing some interesting mid-range arpeggios and, 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 me and melodies there. We didn't really go for the strumming thing. It was more like of a, a melodic backing to what Lando was living with the verse and vocal parts there. There were lead parts as guitar. There's a bit of sizzle with the lead guitar parts as a sub layer in the mid-range there admit to hires there which were yeah they're a bit more subtle because then we sidetracked the double double tracked the side guitars on the rhythm parts on the clean strings and then we had like the electric lead and the background element with the bass and um and drums as well coming with the filled parts first half of the chorus second half dropping in the bass it was cool i think this song if i'm not um misunderstanding it is about being anywhere with that person he's talking about how he's made songs about previous people in the past and stuff like that but like basically this is this is commitment right now we've been trying to slide into the dms and trying to connect with this person it's not necessarily been working out we're saying hey look seriously no i'm committed to the situation we can make this work i'm keen to make this work and i i kind of like that it's a different mood from what we had with the previous tracks resistance and on the rocks there potentially i'm not sure this is a new person or the same maybe it is the same but but either way you know the stories make sense they're salient i i think there's kind of a there's a semi-neutral response that i have musically with the motif and this there's warmth with the guitar parts and a bit of romanticism with the leads and how they kind of had the country blues kind of stuff going on there more of a major focus there we don't have any sort of harsh or kind of gritty elements in, in the actual mix itself that because not just because it's mixed and produced well but also just because we're lacking any sort of like distortion and stuff which is kind of dope it seems like we're in a happier place with this one i get that from the chord progressions and the vocal style so Let's just hope that continues. Because we have track number six now, uh, Quarter Past with Lando is Living and Hashi Dopest. Mm. Oh, yeah. Back to the intense uh, Metatune. 
I saw you at school Cause we ain't got no phones I miss the cold days in the cold play When your dad said ten But we ain't making it home Cause it's a quarter past time For me to get you alone And you keep rubbing on my body Cause you love this cologne You keep on asking where we going Destination unknown And you won't ever have to ask me If I love you, babe, that's facts I don't care about these bitches But I love when you react And honestly, I hate these drugs But I might just relapse Honestly, I hate them But I need them to relax Honestly, I hate you, but I really need you back uh, Struggling, coasting, man, I've been looking for a reason, man I'm done with these DMs before I turn into a demon Shawty make me go crazy, she got me acting like a heathen I'm deleting my Tinder, bitch, I don't even really need it I've been fiending for these girls that I can't get Deleting social media, I just wanna forget All these unrealistic standards that I never really fit That Shawty only wants me when my bank account looks lit Okay I like how raw and honest we are about these interactions with the people that we meet. You know, like rubbing on them because they like the sound of their cologne and stuff. Like, look, talking about how we don't... Like, just, just it's stuff where, like, you kind of need to open yourself up as a musician for people to be able to connect and understand you. If you're too, if you're too uh, covered, like, if you don't allow people to kind of have an insight into your viewpoints and stuff and show a bit of... Um, like, if you aren't transparent, people are going to wonder why. So I, I enjoy the fact that we are being sort of really like kind of honest and freeform with our expressiveness here. Like there's a relative consistency of the way we're trying to communicate. I think part of that might be the use of like the effects on the voice as well as creating sort of like a semi synthy sound to it. The guitar leads looped with the bass and drums are pleasant. I think this is a bit more conservative than, for example, Almost There and stuff. I don't mind that. I think Almost There to be fair is an interlude, but it'd be cool to see if we have more tracks like that. It's time for me to get you alone and you keep rubbing on my body because you love this cologne. You keep on asking where we going, destination unknown. And you won't ever have to ask me if I love you, babe, that's facts. I don't care about these bitches, but I love when you react. And honestly, I hate these drugs, but I might just relapse. Honestly, I hate them, but I need them to relax. Honestly, I hate you, but I really need you back. It's a quarter past ten to get you alone and get you up on the phone. And I never want to be alone unless we've been alone. It's being with you alone. And I can I get a smile for my blessings? My life's a fucking wreck. And your smile's a fucking blessing I Rocking with you if you was broke And even if you took a subway And a bus to your work Cause I Staying even if it gon' hurt Cause at the end of our eternity I know it gon' work And I Know you love it when I react I smell your cologne And it's bringing me back Back Oh okay So we're talking from the woman Who is smelling the cologne Kind of situation here With Hashi Dopest I like that I like that There's a bit of a response To what Lando is living Is saying here That's nice We also have solid vocal technique And I really appreciate The legato technique There as well It's just the vocal texture itself It's bringing me back to life It's bringing me back It's bringing me back to life and see, we did the same thing that we did with Overdrive on track three, where I think we're allowing our featured artists to have their own, like, third or their own half of the song. And I, I love it. I think it's really good to have refrain from repeating the chorus, because at that point, I think, even in a two and a half minute track, as I said before, we, we understand the theory here. I think it would have been weird to have reiterated upon that hook, to be fair, from Land Those Living after Hashi Dopest's part, because we're kind of talking about what we want. And it's almost like now that Hashi Dopus has said what they said, we understand their perspective. When Hashi Dopus said it's bringing me back to life, it kind of makes me wonder whether like they're realizing they're rekindling that connection that they have. And I think that how I say neutral, not in the sense that like it's it's that's a bad thing, but like we don't go for like a really super happy vibe with it. We don't go for a really super sad vibe. We're trying to find a midpoint, an equilibrium tonally there with the use of the major and minor or some extensions occasionally which make them more kind of kind of minor or kind of major with the drums and bass not having as much personality in the sense that i don't think they're trying to affect how the listener feels with it it's trying to be sort of like more sort of how do i say this like they're they're beats that suit the genre well and they're fashionable and i understand and recognize them from like how music is done nowadays it's very kind of up to par and contemporary i just i think that f for this track we were probably to sort of more provide a platform to speak about our experiences with it the focal point 
was the vocals here as opposed to other tracks where it might have had like guitar leads or like pianos or something like that. I still think nonetheless it was really well handled. I'm really happy to have this collaboration. I think that the structuring works. Even if it's like one that we've had a couple of times now, I think it works very well. We do, however, have another video now. As I understand it, this video, if I'm not mistaken, is crawling back. If I'm wrong, this is gonna suck. Produced by Jimmy Hooks. Oh, cool. But only one more time. I said I can't fuck with you, but I need some more time. I said I can't fuck with you, but then you hit my line. I said I can't fuck with you, but then you're on my mind again. You're on my mind, and damn, you're looking fine. I know I said I wouldn't, but I need it one more time. You're the first thing that I think about when I clock in the grind. You're the last thing that I think about before I close my eyes. What's up? And the last thing I think about before I close my eyes and when I basically this person's really kind of in their head at the moment. I I appreciate that attention to detail there. Again, when I talked about someone really kind of opening themselves up and letting you and letting you like kind of get to know them what you're going through. This is the kind of stuff I appreciate. You can't really I don't think you can do well with music um on any kind of level unless you have that sense of you know what i mean it's just it, it it's you don't want the listener thinking you've got something to hide when i dream peace and quiet is better for me i don't like to scream we were getting close but we weren't acting like a team yeah yeah so what's up with it come on baby come on in and huddle up with it i know your codes are bringing in and cuddle up with it i know you're up for it i know you hate me but you love me but you fuck with it so what's up with it? Yeah, what's up with it? If you fall in love with me, bitch, then you stuck with it. Stuck with it, stuck with it, stuck with it. Yeah, you stuck with it. Stuck with it, stuck with it, Yeah, you stuck with it. And these like sub layers are stuck with it parts there. They create depth in the mix. It's like, oh I'm listening to this, but then I have the occasional kind of words come through from Lando's living on top. It's it's cool. Stuck call it back, but only one more time. That's what I keep telling myself, living in a lie. Punching in your number, wondering why I call you back. After all the shit you did to me, you got me crawling back to you. Crawling back, but only one more time. I said I can't fuck with you, but I need some more time. I said I can't fuck with you, but then you hit my line. I said I can't fuck with you, but then you're on my mind again. I call her back, but then I change my mind. I'm thinking it's too late, she picking up on the first time. She called me back, but I don't pick it up. After all the shit you put me through, I think I had enough. Oh, okay. See, I was wondering why he was holding on there to the stairs. I don't usually comment on videos. I was thinking, why is he like this? Is it because he's holding on, but then he like lets go and he talks, but he says that line. That That's cool. That's the benefit of a video, you know? Allowing us the theme to go out. Okay, so, crawling back. Now, what do I think this track's about? Well, I mean, I think it's fairly straightforward. You have someone who is discussing how they keep going back to this person even though they don't want to. In the previous track, they talked about, um, you know, quarter past, they talked about why um, they, they didn't want to go back to the drugs and stuff because they couldn't, like, cope. But they hated them, but they'd go back to them. And then they talked about... I'm wondering if, like, it's like an addiction for this person. They really cannot help but self-sabotage by trying to get back in touch with this person, regardless of how much they've been hurt. I didn't get the feeling up until now that this was a toxic situation. But if this is another perspective of it, maybe he's realized over time that the situation they have, even though he thought it was good, wasn't. Maybe there are reasons why he was needing to find someone else and not being faithful, etc. It's interesting development here. I, I I think that the vocals well handled. We had a fairly, we had a more conservative kind of structure to this with verse, chorus, verse, choruses here. We had sub layers and vocal and stuff. It's not that like there was less going on with the vocals themselves. It's just structurally, it was a bit more kind of safe. And I, I don't necessarily mind that. 
I think we've got a good feeling for the hook here. The guitars, bass, and drums are instruments we're quite familiar with at this point, like the electrics with a bit of reverb, delay there, and a bit of a wispy nature then were cool. I feel like we could have explored the, the stereo field more with the vocals there, but if we wanted to keep the vocals in the center simply just to maintain that sort of like uh, space, then that's absolutely fine. At 2 minutes 24, it's short enough to get away with having a sort of a singular motif that continues throughout. I've got main issues with it, man. I think it's well handled. It's crazy to think we're a third through the album already. Because we have track number eight now. Uh, Baggage with the Dunsey remix. Lando is living in Dunsey. Let's go. Hmm, guitars again. Damn, there was just no space to, to pause it there. We just spat flow for like a solid minute or so. That was no, at least 40 seconds to be fair. There's quite a bit of the guitar at the start. I like it. I dig it. It's an, it's an interesting angle. We're like addressing this person and we're just accepting after the addiction that we were potentially talking about with crawling back, um, like in a toxic relationship that, you know, just, just screw it. I'm going to wish this person luck and we're just going to like, you're just going to move on. I wish him the best of luck to carry all the baggage that you have. Um, because I sure is, because <laughs> he's going to need all the help he can get. I, I think that the guitars here, the triplet flow are nice. Yeah, it's definitely triplets, definitely triplets. It could be six, eight, I'm not sure. But either way, it's a different rhythm or phrasing there that is, you know, it just switches things up a little bit, freshens the palette. The drums and the bass that come along that are fantastic. And it's just nice at this point that we're paused at for things to come down a little bit so you can kind of soberly uh, accept everything or absorb everything that's been been mentioned. I don't hold grudges, I only got love That shit's for the birds, I don't care about a dove I take a few L's and I make me a W You did me dirty, but I'm still in love with you Taught me some lessons, but I'm finally done with you But I'm finally done with you, letting you go I gave you an hour, you gave me a minute You gave me a mile, I kept you at inches Cause I don't know when I might see you again yeah. uh, And I'm at my limit, you don't wanna visit I thought that you might, but you clearly don't miss it Cause you had your eyes set on somebody else yeah, like leaving me. The best thing you did for me, I had to go through that struggle. You left a motherfucker lonely when I was trying to get it out the muscle. Yeah, look at me. Now that I'm up and you see me, know you want another Chance for the real one like me, you can go on me like you did with my little brother yeah. Cheating on, cheated on me and the one before me and another And for that little baby, I'm praying for you, you gotta find another mother yeah. Current hubby, hope you don't believe it when she telling you that she love you Cause she don't stay loyal when it's down and dirty, she'll find another man to fuck with I mean, like, let's be real here. I think that Dunsey was a fantastic... Uh, that, I'm grateful that it came in there because it was the change in vocal texture there. It was a similar phrasing rhythmically, don't get me wrong, but to harmonize instantly between the mids and lows there at a lower range than Lando's Living was at was fantastic. We offer a different perspective about, like, the cheating and stuff like that that was going on and everything like that after Lando had been talking about the person being quite manipulative and such. And and you get then you get these wonderful vocal harmonies from Dunsey where they show not only can they rap but and they can stack vo, you know vocal parts but they can also sing, 
and it was similar to kind of like the experience I had with um, Overdrive here, where I'm just, I'm really blown away. But what's cool about this one is that we're now returning back to the chorus. This is kind of what I like within a featured track. I like when you either finish the track on that second musician, the, the, the featured artist, or you allow yourself to loop back to the main message because it kind of connects. You gave me a minute, you gave me a mile, I kept you at inches because I don't know when I might see you again. Yeah. Uh, and I'm in my limit, you don't want to visit. I thought that you might, but you clearly don't miss it because you had your eyes set on somebody else. But fuck it, that's love. You do what you got to just keep it a buck. I'm a respect it, don't worry, it's up. If that's your new man, then I'm dabbing him up. I'm saying goodbye and I'm wishing him luck and I'm praying to God that he got enough muscle to carry your baggage and finish your puzzle. Cause you ain't got nothing but hurt in your heart and a whole lot of demons that man in for trouble. And finishing on the guitar motif. Mm. Okay, we finished on their guitar strum there. I was half expecting this to go, Brum, but I also understand it's been done quite a lot. So it's okay if we don't finish a track like in a way where you, you typically would like a resolving chord or something like that. It's cool. I think this track was well handled there. It was another uh, solid collaboration between Lando's Living and Dunsey. The corporations of motif were interesting and pleasing to listen to. There were no harsh textures, so it was just really kind of calming and soothing for most of the way. It allowed for a more neutral f foundation for Lando's Living as well as Dunsey later on to come in and speak their truths there. It was nice to just have the space at the start of the track just to appreciate the guitar motif before Lando's Living came in. We weren't afraid to allow more space to just be able to sort of uh, just sit with the music and appreciate it. I, I enjoy that. I like when people are confident and, and satisfied with the motif or like the, the backings by themselves that they're strong enough on that account. But uh, yeah, I think having the, there was some acoustic drum elements there. I think we might've had like a sampled like kind of hi-hat or a kicker or something like that as well in the mix, as well as like basses. I just, that was dope. Dynamic range for sure. Going between the quieter vocal parts with just the guitar parts. And uh, when we had like the, the drums just coming in kind of Peaks and troves, etc. And uh, yeah, what I think the track is about, I mean, I've talked about it, it's sort of iterating on the baggage the person has. They don't want to solve that puzzle for them. They know they don't have to. They're trying to sort of get a, a sense of uh, distance between them, you know, regardless of how difficult it might have initially been and despite the difficulties associated. I think the production is solid. It continues to be solid. Really, really good stuff. Really happy with it. And yeah, I'm just glad that Lando's Living is finding these musicians that complement his vocal style and his style of music. It's it's smart stuff. But we've got, uh, we've got Love, 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 The Interlude, track number nine for today. More ukulele. I like the simple things, I really can't deny it. But I get shy when I'm with pretty girls in private. I can't help it. Your aura keeps me quiet You wanna let me in but I don't feel invited I play it safe cause I'm too scared to get excited Cause the last time I gave my heart started like this Cause it's all fun and games till we start to dismiss The simple things and little things that hooked us in the first place I'd be I, Sorry to interrupt, I'll go back a little bit so we can continue with where he's going But that chord there was a different one to what we had in previous tales And I like that we're kind of switching things up a little bit to in instigate That there is a change there musically harmonic Things that hooked us in the first place. I'd be lying if I told you I ain't love you since the first day. Not lying, no, I ain't lying to you, baby. Tell me, tell me you feel the same way. Tell me you felt me and you wanna stay. Tell me, tell me you feel the same way. Tell me you'll help me, I won't run away. Love, love, love.
mean, it's just the strums. I'm just trying to sort of figure out when to pause, eh? I know it's at the end of the track, but sometimes the tracks finish so bluntly that you're instantly into the next one before they continue. Um, man, okay. Um, love, love, love. I think it's kind of a continuation of a lot of the themes that we've had in previous tracks of this album, where we're basically just discussing our position with love in general. We're discussing our relationships or connections to people, how we're coping with it, how we aren't coping with it. It's, it's just kind of commiserating on all the things we discussed previously. And I I kind of like that there's a soothing aspect to the way the ukuleles are played here. It's very um, peaceful sounding with the bird sounds as well, similar to some of the foliage stuff we had in Montana Magic, where we had that, we had like the walks and stuff and it'd come along and be like, hey, you know, have a listen to this, let me know what you think, etc. It's very, it's very uh, interactive, if that makes sense, and it's not too kind of cliched. This is just as much a song as any other track within this. It's interesting to me that it's an interlude, whether we're deliberately calling it an interlude because it's very different from the, the we're, we're like we maybe we felt like this is different enough from like the kick and 808 and drum, bass stuff. Well, I mean we had drums and, and bass within this. It was a bit more. This is a song song. I, I think that uh, it's a nice break, but it also has a similar ambience to previous parts we've, we've heard there, there's no harsh rough edges to any of this like we discuss some stuff that's kind of intense but like you never get the feeling that Lando is living is trying to implement anything particularly off-putting it's typically very well measured compositionally instrumentally and you know with a lot the, the production in general across this album has been solid love 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 it was just nice to again sit there with the the synth or the key or whatever it was adding a pad like layer with the ukuleles and just enjoy the motif that's been created here a moment of peace before i suppose i'm done track number 10 featuring koi uh, i'm trying to save too many uh, like my main comments for the last part of this like the conclusion at the end so that this part of listening isn't too long whilst trying not to miss things that are important so it's a balancing act but we'll get through it <laughs> but yeah i'm done featuring koi track number 10 Ooh. Sorry, we haven't had any guitar like that before. It's sensational. Holy crap, dude. Holy crap, man. But now that I got it, I'm up. Hey, I see some, I get it, I got it. Cause making that money ain't really too tough now. I'm smoking Peninsula Gardens, so you know that every single one of my blunts loud. Now that I finally be making that money, I know that my mom and my dad proud. 10K for my grandma, I got 20K for my bros. I need 50K for my parents, I got zero dollars for these hoes. I need a milli up in my bank account because a hundred K is too low. I need to double that and then triple that just so everybody here know. They should have had some pads or since they were. I reckon that would have been kind of high. Because they had space there in the composition. I know that they put the guitars down a little bit lower and filtered it. But you could have added a new instrument there and kind of like layered on those guitar layers and like the next part and had them. I I just, I love how much energy it is. This is such a different track to what we've had previously. There's so much more instrumental intensity there. And the portamento synths. Oh, yeah. 
get some money, I'm living okay. okay. Got some hoes from Mobile Bay. I find them out, they know the rotation. Uh -huh. Fuck this shit, look better on paper. Yeah. I'm getting tired of the city, I need me some age. I need to live more stable. Stay. I need to find somewhere in the middle. Yeah. I need to find some time to chill. I need to find some time to be real. Yeah. I my hiding and shit to be honest. I got some nightmares like me, Mel. Maybe I bit off more than a little. I'm eating beats like it's last meal. She yeah. making jokes like Keenan Pill. I ain't seen that show to be real. I never seen that shit in my life. I ran the money, I saw damn high. I can explain this shit if I try. I probably fucked up so many times. I had to take that shit on the chin. Fuck making amends, I'm burning the bridge. I make some money, I'll do it again. I make some money, I'll do it again. Yeah, yeah. A bunch. Man, that was quite a lot to take in. That was overwhelming. That was, that's my favorite track of the album. I don't know what clicked in there, but just the really kind of incredibly well-played guitar parts combined with the wow, wow, kind of real kind of raucous bass with a wonderful portamento wow, kind of with those sounds there. The drums being phenomenally punchy and active and energetic there. It's just, you. the guitars were double tracked. This is what I want to communicate. That is so clean with that guitar work. For them to double track that and get them in time there is phenomenal with the little harmonics and stuff as well that whoever was playing the guitar and that's an absolute uh, what, what, very impressive but it's also the vocals of Lando's Living there was just something about this track I think that kind of pushed Lando's Living to be even more kind of like they were in the zone in this one never mind Koi's verse there where it was a nice foil with some of the backing tracks and overdubs and stuff like that and the interesting different vocal effects we had on those with, with the, the repeaters and such and and, and like I, I don't know what this track is about aside from it, it being like when we we talked about having success for like women and getting involved and stuff like that right so i'm wondering if we're done as in we've made mistakes but we finally got to a point where we're happy with it or are we saying that we're done with those experiences because they're not worth it because we can't it, it, no matter how much pleasure it is it's not worth it the consequences afterwards i'm assuming given the vibe of the track the way things were played there the energy behind it it's like it's emphatic it's like kind of like no i've done this we're on the victory lap at the moment we've managed to succeed we're, we're satisfied with things i'd have to listen through the vocals again though because we talk about like the things near i heard there where we sounded like we were doing pretty well and i i think that's an interesting movement from love 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 it's a this completely different beast this one though i'm wondering if we're gonna have more tracks like this within this album i really appreciate the complexity and care taken with those i think this is proof that we can be a little bit less passive with the amount of busyness you know with the instruments allowing for a bit of fanciness there without overtaking the vocals and in, instances in it's great i like that koi and lando was living harmonized at the end there it was a nice transition trade-off and it was also two minutes 41 so it was nice and short easy to digest we got Feeling Good, track number 11 today, featuring Overdrive, so let's go. Interesting. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. I roll up a wood right to my face. I'm feeling hmm. good, like I'm feeling great. I feel amazing, like this is my fate. I feel incredible, haters can wait. They eat in my dick, they ain't watching, they wait. Let's get it straight, that's what they ain't. That's what I am. I'm working my ass off, just going as Dan. They working their ass off, but barely got fans. They peeping this shit, cause I caught out they mans. <laughs> they tuning to me like a motherfucking movie. They keeping it basic, like white girls and truly. If you want some bullshit, I'll judge you like Judy. I'm loving the swings, but I hate when they moody for real. I, I like the fact that we had a different key progression, or rather a different chord progression and bass line there for that bridge there. I think that was a smart move. The fuck is your deal? Why you so angry? Just keep this shit real. I'm feeling good. There ain't shit you can do to me. I got a mission. Can no one get through to me? And that was Overdrive there with the vocals and the chorus. A nice foil change there. Some slide guitars in the background. Very kind of, um, I don't know how to describe the mood here. It feels nostalgic somehow. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. I roll up a wood right to my face. I'm feeling good. Like, I'm feeling great. I feel amazing. Like, this is my fate. I feel incredible. Haters can wait. They eat in my dick. They ain't watching. They wait. Movie. They keeping it basic 
like white girls and truly if you want some bullshit i'll judge you like judy i'm loving the swings but i hate when they moody for real the fuck is your deal why you so angry just keep this shit real i'm feeling good there ain't shit you can do to me i got a mission can no one get through to me As, uh, I'm not getting the words through clearly from that that chorus. If I'm honest, like was that Wicked Games at the end? I'm not sure. I just it's, I I feel bad about it. Because we can clearly sing. Like Overdrive can sing. That part there was really wonderful. It was really gorgeous. I think when we harmonized though, there was just not the necessary clarity to the syllables that I was needing there. There was like a little bit too much kind of fuzziness there. Aside from that though, feeling good. I mean, I think that's fairly straightforward there. We have the guitars like the slidey elements, a little bit of ambience there with the palm muted strums, the bass and drums when they came in as well were dope. Lando is living a familiar vocal tone there, a little bit of sort of like a modulation on that, but not too much. There's been no points in this album where I've been like, yeah, they shouldn't have had that amount of vocal metatune or whatever, you know, and that's not always something I feel. Sometimes there can be a little bit too much for my tastes, even though I do like my hip hop and rap. Um, not as familiar as I'd want to be, but like, you know, we get, <laughs> we're getting there. And uh, yeah, ultimately, I think this is just another really kind of peaceful, upbeat, positive track. The major focus of the triads within the chord progressions makes sense there. The focus on the vocals with Lando's living on the verses and overdrive in the choruses makes sense as well. Like, and I think the production again is solid. Like, honestly, like, I'm really happy at this halfway point because I'm going to take a break for the, for the bit because i got to do some, some other work. But I, I enjoy listening to Lando's Living stuff. This album has been a pleasure for the most part. I don't think there's been any points where I've been like, oh, I don't really feel this. There's only one part with I'm Done featuring Koi where I was like, we could have potentially added like a little synthy thing. And I think Resistance, we could have potentially had one less time of the, the chorus. But these are things that I think Lando's Living is aware of because we I have tracks where we don't put that extra chorus at the end. We allow like with On The Rocks as well as Quarter Pass, we allow the, the featured artists to just let their, their time be at, at the end. And, and even with the Koi track, there is stuff here where like, I feel like when I first started reviewing Lando's Living stuff, I would have been like, oh yeah, no, we didn't necessarily indeed have this much of this, but that's becoming less and less common now. And I think it's along Lando's Living's journey, they've really started to get a hang. And to be fair, it's it's also due in part to the production team, you know, um, but as I mentioned at the start, but. It, it's it's we're getting a really good idea for our direction what we want out of these tracks and i think feeling good just as a closing note before i go is about someone being in a happier place than they were previously maybe they broke away from those toxic relationships and figured out what was really going on and found a way to move forward and that makes me very excited for the rest of the album which we'll check out in a moment so i'll see you then stay tuned and welcome back to part two of this album review tracks 12 to 21 in this session i'm going to be reviewing the rest of the album had a great time with the first half, just keen to hear the rest. So this is both of y'all with Lando is Living uh, featuring Trevor Dean. Let's go. Great bass response. It's always late night when she slide to the crib. Limited time and then she got a dip. She always get home so her boyfriend don't trip. And I cannot blame him. I watch that girl strip. Probably spend less than an hour on chit chat. She leaning right over then tell me to hit that. I said what's up with it. She said let's get that. I said I'm up for it. She said I get that. She ain't no lover but I'ma still fuck her. Cause she make me feel good and I ain't no sucker. It's only one night until we have another. And if you're still game for it we'll add another. I got the time for the both of y'all. I got some shit for the both of y'all. Whatever I'm doing to her, I be doing to you. I be equal to both of y'all. Oh, okay. So there's more than one person involved. All right. Got this kind of trendy kind of house beat to it. It's kind of interesting comparison to the other tracks. Style of my women, if they got a problem, you bet I'm gonna listen. If she coming over, you bet she gonna get it. You tell her don't do it. We already did it. I'm sorry. Exploring that girl like Safari, and it's only Friday. I feel like I'm Charlie. I push start the whip, and that bitch sounding gnarly. I hit your bitch and she wanted it. Browsing that gram until y'all shawty hearted it. I couldn't help myself. Y'all shawty started it. She for the streets, and you should have departed it. I 
it's just the little bits of dynamic range they're showing there with a the really quiet little percussive hits there in the vocal uh the the vocal chops and and a bit of the di a bit of that relief there you know Is that Trevor Dean or is that just vocal manipulation there? Oh, that was a quick verse. Are we going back to the hook? No, we're not. Nice. We did the changeover again. I mean, like, this track was relatively minimalist with the progression we had with the verse, the percussive layers there, the chord note accents on the house kind of beats there. We had, of course, the nice, the, the, the moody bass, but not overdoing it, I suppose. And these kind of dun 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 dun, these synth plucks things that kind of accented the triads of the chord progressions there with some vocal chops on the side for, for good measure. And I think that the vocals from Lando's Living, they were great. Trevor Dean's verse is good too, solid, you know. You get the feeling that they're trying to get their, have their cake and eat it too from this verses, you know. It's um, it makes sense, you know, if they if you don't love someone, but there's no reason not to have a good time, right? So I, I get it, you know. I'm wondering if this is following on from the feeling good track. If this if having multiple options is the the improvement in our lives that we didn't necessarily have before. Also, talking about getting with someone else is almost else is good, you know. There's a bit of shenanigans going on there, but that that's all good. No, I mean it, honestly, it's just it's just storytelling at the end of the day. The production continues to say. Are relatively complimentary and I, I appreciate that you know it's been it's, it's been really consistent they are you know solid throughout this album we've got Bay City track number 14 13 13 right I'm going back to the guitars for this one welcome to the mitten more exclusively Bay City we got several hundred girls most of them are pretty we got rappers that ain't never gonna make it it's a pity but that ain't me, my last album did damn near 50 Started in the Skyrim, now it's festivals and shit And I don't mean performing, I mean headlining that bitch I started from the bottom, I'll bring all my homies up It won't matter who gon' take it, if I make it, we all up a one for I'm signing deals for all my friends I don't do this shit for everyone, it really just depends If you're talented and loyal, and I know that you'll defend Everything that I've been building, I don't like when they pretend Okay, mm. Yeah, we cool, we straight. I don't know where you've been on lately, but cool, it's great. I just keep on doing me and I see you doing you. Everybody want attention, go and hop in the queue. Welcome to the main, more exclusively based city. We got several hundred girls, most of them are pretty. We got rappers that ain't never gonna make it, it's a pity. But that ain't me, my last album did damn near 50. I started in the Skyrim, now it's festivals and shit. And I don't mean performing, I mean headlining that bitch. I started from the bottom, I'll bring all my homies up. It won't matter who gon' take it, if I make it, we all up. So we're talking about the city that we're in, maybe the city we grew up in, and then moving on from that and discussing how we've gone from like being kind of humble beginnings to getting to a point where we would be looking to do like festivals and shows and stuff and headlining them and he's talking about bringing his mates up with him i i dig that as a nice positive sort of story sort of a little bit more sort of like um some of the stuff we were talking about in the previous channel oh, there's an issue with that it's nice to sort of it's, it's a positive message i think like the the idea that he wants to bring everyone out with him i like that the guitars are soothing and somber sounding you know like we've had time to think and reflect on our position in the grand scheme of things 
with some really interesting kind of flurries on the left side of the stereo field there, like an old school kind of music box kind of aesthetic there. It's an interesting taste. It's an interesting position. It's not on both sides. What the fuck you even thinking? I've been chilling in the booth while all the rest of you been drinking. I'll just stay afloat while all the bad apples start sinking. You ain't got a bitch, but if you did, I would be linking. I'd be locked in, tuned in. You won't even know if that really was your bitch. So why she always in my phone? I hope you understand. I'm just trying to let you know because a homie gonna be straight and these hoes will still be hoes. I started in the sky room, now it's festivals and shit. Back to Hulk. I don't mean performing, I mean headlining that bitch. I started from the bottom. I'll bring all my homies up It won't matter who gon' take it If one make it, we all up A1-4, I'm signing deals for all my friends I don't do this shit for everyone It really just depends If you're talented and loyal And I know that you'll defend Everything that I've been building I don't like when they pretend There's quite a lot of hooks in this track It's 2 minutes 30 Interesting guitar riff there Oh, so I went to the other side that time. That's okay. So things balance out with the wow kind of sound there going to the right. They might have done it before. I just didn't catch it that time. But uh, okay. So I think I liked a lot of the song and what we had there. We were pretty dependent on that hook. I think we repeated it up like one too many times near the end. We could have potentially just had a really short track there without necessarily needing that um that iteration of it as I feel we'd kind of gotten the idea of it at that point. I mean, we do have, to be fair, like, we are trying to keep each of these tracks two minutes. It's, and it's okay to have more than a couple of hooks in a song. It's simply that I think we were pretty dependent on the vocals as a focal point for this track. The theme behind it with the guitars, the 808s, the drums, etc., with the clicky kind of claps, and the occasional builded hi-hats on the side there coming in with the music box things. That was kind of, we kind of had almost everything at once, and I think maybe we were just aware we needed to kind of keep it more, because sort of singly, potentially. It's interesting that we were comparing ourselves to other people who are just sitting there drinking whilst we're in the booth and stuff like that, trying to work towards our dream. It's it's stuff that I've heard from Lando's living in previous albums, and, and it's something that potentially, you know, he's they're, they're aware of as they continue to make moves to, that of the people around them who are sort of potentially fronting but, but they're just never going to make it in the industry. And it's kind of sad when you think about it, but it's just, it's just how things are for people, you know? Some people make it and some people don't. But in the meantime, we've got I Love My Family, track number 14 for today. And Jimmy's the producer call out there. I love my family, I hope that I make them proud. I love my mother, I know that she's looking now. I love my father, I know what he's giving now. I love my sister, she never wanted to cry right now. I'm messed up, broken, no clue where I'm even going. 23 whole years of my life and ain't nothing showing. Music is my happiness, money is serotonin. I do anything for family, I promise that I ain't playing. Just pick me out a beat and I'll show you what I've been saying. Just pull up all my numbers, I'll show you why they've been paying. Take a look around my vault, you know why all these rappers praying. I keep coming out on top and that's exactly where I'm staying. Yeah, why the fuck they keep on playing? All my numbers going. Is that a different verse? Like, did we re record that vocal part? It just sounds different. There's a different tone to the mic. In my bank account display and all that shit I'm putting in and the benefits within. I can't stop myself from blowing up. That bitch gonna want my kid and I can't blame her. I would probably want them too. They'll be born with what I got and that's a whole lot of these blues. Cause they daddy get that money with or without any clues. Balenciaga's overrated, got new balance on my shoes. New balance for my life and new balance with the blues. New balance with my choices and new balance with the crew. I'm focused on what matters and I hope that you are too. Yeah, yeah, I hope that you are too. I love my family, I hope that I make them proud. I love my mother, I know that she's looking now. I love my father, I know what he's giving now. I love my sister, she never wanted to cloud right now. It's nice it's nice to hear about the family side of things. I don't necessarily think we've had a lot of that in these albums. Not that we need to as a prerequisite for releasing an album in, in whatever genre, but it's nice to hear how he feels about his family, you know. Especially like I suppose it's he's talking about the concerns here that he has about letting them down. You know, with his journey that he has at the age of 23, trying to figure everything out. Yeah, 
Just pick me out a beat and I'll show you what I've been saying. Just pull up all my numbers, I'll show you why they've been paying. Take a look around my vault, you know why all these rappers praying. I keep coming out on top and that's exactly where I'm staying. I love my family, I'm wishing them Okay, we've got another hook, all right. I keep talking about how I'll be moving west. Pack my bags and grab my shit and I'll figure out all the rest. I've been focused on more doing and worrying so much less. I, I can't focus Good. on the past. I'm looking towards the future, not thinking about what had passed. 40 fucking hours a week and I'm feeling gassed. I do 40 fucking more on the side and I'm living fast. Because it's worth noting that, like, Lando's Living has released three albums. At least I think, you know, it was Montana Magic, and then there was the one that he released in 2022, and then, and then we've got this one, Stop and Smell the Flowers. That's a decent effort. That That is not an easy thing to do. Some artists release albums once every half decade or so, and a lot of music artists have only released albums on an annual basis because they've been contractually obligated to in order to repay their their advances at least in the turn of the in the in the late 20th century that was how things worked how things have changed to do with the industry now but um you you get the feeling that lando is living is considerate of the people around him like those very very close to him whilst also recognizing that like that move to the midwest it it was something that really kind of or like to or from the midwest it was something he really had to think through in order to really sort of like calibrate his dream and his destiny and stuff like that you get this kind of wistful tone from those guitar leads there the the rhythm the steel string parts have a reverb to them which makes it sound like he's thinking back on his decisions and stuff like that it's kind of it's really pretty to be honest there's a relative um there's kind of a subtle complexity to the the, the influences of those extensions within the harmonies there the drums and and the bass there are ground beds for the album throughout the entire for throughout a lot of it it's not always the same to be fair but They've been here and they, they articulate and highlight the root notes there. It, it's like there might have been other instruments as well, but like the vocals were the focal point of this one as per a lot of these other ones. I, I do like when there's a bit of fanciness with the guitar licks, such as in Bass City, but especially in tracks like I'm Done and stuff like that. But it's, it's okay. We can have more kind of uh, measured, calmer affairs like this one, especially when we're trying to be sort of more quote unquote real about how we feel about our family and the connections we have and the situation we're in. It's totally fine. I'm glad that we changed that chorus at the end. I thought we were going to have the same hook line that we had previously, but we switched it. That was a nice trick. That was a nice little twist. I, I, I a lot of love for that. It's a common I've made throughout this album. On not, not actually throughout this album. A few of the tracks it could have been like one less chorus, right? But, but that was not a situation. That that was nice to have that extra kind of angle to it. Well done. But yeah, we got ain't shit track number fifteen now. I said, bitch, you probably right. I don't really know how to act. Shawty, tell me one thing and then I go and react. Probably not too smart. I get mad without all the facts. I keep ruining the good things whenever they come around. I keep dealing with the problems and nobody helps me out. I've been stuck up in my head and there's nobody else around. I keep wondering if I might be happier in the ground. I mean, that's horrific. I really hope that Lando is living doesn't feel that way. That's that's awful. Didn't we have tracks earlier where we were talking about how we'd figured out that person's kind of garbage and how we were trying to work around that? That's just really how it goes. Everybody finna hate you when you're standing on ten toes. Music's in the choir, smelling they ain't got the nose. When I'm finally blowing up, you know exactly how it goes. That's life. I like the part about the nose. There's been some wordplay within this album. There are specific lines that I hear there that I'm like, yeah, though, that's clever. We're putting effort into our lyrics. I really appreciate that. I don't mean that in a condescending way. I mean, like, legitimately, we're trying to make, we're putting genuine effort, and I really appreciate that. I don't want to know nobody. If you ain't never done nothing for me, you get no money. If you don't see me laughing, you joking, that shit ain't funny. Even when it's raining, I swear that the sky be sunny. Yeah, even though I'm feeling down, I know that I'm better off above than underground. Yeah, even though she let me down, I think that I'm better off with that gun that around. That thing you ain't shit. 
and then like go like don't know how to act and then react and stuff like that. That usually that like rhyming scheme shit and then act and then act and then act isn't something that I always get behind, but we're really committing to it. And it's kind of a little bit jarring having that second word there, completely different thing. But it, it works because we don't stray away from it. Whenever they come around, I keep dealing with the problems and nobody helps me out. I've been stuck up in my head and there's nobody else around. I keep wondering if I might be happier in the ground. I've been genuinely wondering if that might be the truth. I just bottle up this shit and then I spit it in the booth. Only got two viewers, but you know they both the truth. I've been coming yeah. off the top and you okay. can ask me for the proof. If you see me on the gram, then just hop up in the live. Cause I'm probably making hits that you can't see up in the sky. I feel like a killer, Michael Thriller when I slide. I feel like a pillar, how my homies in the sky. I was talking about position, then a couple of them died. And I can't get them back, but you know damn well that I tried. Yeah, you know damn well that I tried. I can't get them back, and you know damn well that I tried. And organs, like synthy organ things. I mean, like, they're nice tails on the synthy pad things we have there as sub layers. They're kind of pretty sounding. It's also nice to have the similarity of the guitar tone to kind of help connect the album together. Bass and drum beats are ones we've had throughout the album. I'm familiar with that. Sort of relative accessibility with the 8th and 16th note grooves there. We're staying away from our triplets for a fair chunk of this, which is which is fine. The vocal, the way we're, we're rapping, it's nice to go da 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 Like we're going, <laughs> we're going between octaves. Like we go up to a higher range for the choruses and then like our verses are at a lower tone. It's just a really easy way of sort of making a distinction between which part is which. And um, just a closing comment, I'm really glad that we had that verse initially about like wondering if it'd be better off in the ground, then later on realizing that we would be better above the ground than underneath it. I, I appreciate it. I think, I think it's good because even if we repeat the hook where we talk about whether it's better off being underground, at least we've thought about it and it just kind of maybe indicates this, the, the, the constant battle going to and from we have dealing with those pressures and struggles. It just sounds like there are some people in Lando is Living's life and they're just kind of toxic and unpleasant to be around. I'm sorry that they had to deal with that. that. That's what I kind of appreciate, though, is that we're being led in to understand that in a way that's accessible. Um, empathy, not sympathy, because um, you know they're trying to make the most of it, right? But empathy, the empathy for what they're going through. I'm sure that most people can relate to having people kind of screw them around or whatever. And I mean, he admits he isn't perfect as well in parts of the album, which is even more kind of like uh, admirable, you know? A person who recognizes they're not perfect, still having the courage to say when they're not happy with things. It's good. More things are bullshit. All right, things ain't, you know, like kind of snapping back, you know, popping off or whatever. You, you know what I mean? We've got track number 16, though. Make, make it worse. It's, a, it's great. I like this album. So we've got the click of like a can or something like that, and we have Jimmy there as the producer sign. That's cool. I know I mentioned it before, but lately I've been worried about my health. Ain't nobody take it serious. When I say I need help, had two doctors say I'm fine, but then I'm not. So what the hell? Probably only made it like an hour for the bell rang. Yeah, they say to give it time. Keep on taking medicine. You'll wake up feeling fine. Then how the fuck I keep on waking up and wasting time? Cause I ain't getting better. Ain't nobody on my side. Yeah. Shit make me feel worse. I've been down in all this medicine, but it don't never work. Like, yeah, yeah, that shit make me feel worse. I've been losing faith in every doctor on this earth. Yeah, I've been feeling hurt. Yeah, I've been feeling hurt. Yeah, I've been feeling hurt. But I don't know if the mental or physical coming worse. Like, yeah, I've been through it all. Everybody thinks I'm happy because they only see me fall. Like, yeah. I've been through it all Been praying on my knees And I'm waiting for friends to call Like, yeah, that shit make it worse Got me questioning my life Is it a blessing or a curse? Like, yeah, I'm always feeling worse I can feel it in my chest It's about to pop, it's about to burst Like, like the, yeah, that, that that sound there That that word and, and then like an iteration And then yeah, and then another iteration And yeah, and another iteration It's just such a simple way of keeping things sort of positively like structured for for the it's just satisfying going back to the yeah and then new thing you know it's a it's a nice it's easier to predict it's a uh, familiar thing the fourth time around but I'm assuming we're going to change now so that it doesn't become overdone. Lately, 
I've been worried about my health, ain't nobody take it serious When I say I need help, had two doctors say I'm fine But then I'm not, so what the hell Probably only made it like an hour for the bell rang Yeah, they say to give it time Keep on taking medicine, you'll wake up feeling fine Then how the fuck I keep on waking up and wasting time Cause I ain't getting better, ain't nobody on my side, yeah Shit make me feel worse I've been down in all this medicine But it don't ever work Like yeah, yeah That shit make me feel worse I've been losing faith in every doctor on this earth Lately, I've been worried about my health I don't know if I'ma make it And I know that doesn't help Ain't nobody ever loved me Or they probably would've helped I've been coping on my lonely And I only am myself Yeah, and that's exactly how I like it I've been going through depression But you know that I'ma fight it Ain't nobody out there like all you bitches can go bite it Ain't nobody out there like me I don't even write it half the time I've been feeling numb Every time I take another pill I'm feeling dumb I've been feeling numb I've been feeling numb I've been taking way too fucking much I'm feeling, feeling done I've been going through a lot for real Like, I was really going through it Low key still am, but Every time I'm reminded of all the people that care about me Makes me feel so special and I love you guys so fucking much. I really hope you're rocking with these two albums that I put out. You mean the world to me. I mean, I like that. I think it was nice to have that spoken word near the end. I was just thinking about our situation through the way through. It's, um, you can tell this track is sort of elaborating on some of the stuff we might have been talking about in ancient shit with like the wondering if we'd be better off underground stuff. The, the effect it's having on our mental health and such, you know. Uh, we're kind of going. We we're showing gratitude, Periscope. I think I think we we're just trying to avoid it getting worse, but we're wondering how it is getting worse in the first place. And we're talking about doctors as well, and the doctor's not taking them seriously, which is a shame. I'm hoping that the third doctor that Lanlo is living he finds, hopefully they can actually help them with the situation because it doesn't sound good at all, really. If this is, I'm not sure. I, I, I might have missed exactly what it was that we were having issues with, but like if it's about sort of struggling with our life situation and stuff like that, some doctors are just really awful at it. But I think the, the theme itself, the guitarists behind it, they sounded kind of quietly perky. And I'm not sure if that was like what we needed, but I'm not unhappy about it either. It's more like I understand that we might be trying to softening the, the, the heaviness of some of the lyrics that we're discussing there. It's simply by the motif behind it being a bit brighter. Well, not necessarily brighter. They're still kind of subtle. There was filtering going on to make them so they weren't too bright and shiny and full of sheen but yeah i mean the drums and the bass again similar to what we've had previously uh we had breaks there we iterated upon those hooks in a way and I, it was just nice again to have that spoken word part near the end and to mention the previous elves we got out and stuff like that you know it's nice to have that awareness and to show that in a track that lando living is, is aware that there are other people who do he's thankful for the people that care about him and stuff like that i i, I like that you know but i wasn't I mean, when I, when I read the album, you know, Stop and Smell the Flowers, is that us becoming realistic about the situation we're in? We're kind of under this false pretense of all the stuff that was overwhelming us, and now we're at a position where, hey, this is just what reality is, you know? I don't actually... I, I have these people care about me, even though things are kind of awful right now, and these doctors actually aren't doing a good job. Is that what we're kind of inferring? That we're kind of waking up to the realities of the situation and trying to sort of look at it objectively? Still, you know, well-balanced. You know, overall, again, the production was tight in this one, no issues with leveling or like any other phrasings and positions in the stereo field or anything like that. It was great. We got had it for a minute with Lando's living in DMG. I got ambition, I got everything you'd ask for. I've been doing things that you ain't even asked for. I'm doing so much, I don't think that you could have more. I know I'm cold, but baby, what you got that mask for? I'm sick. I'm coming down with something, I'ma make it quick, yeah. Yeah, I'ma make it quick. I know that you're bad for me, but you're the one I pick. I don't know why I'm so bad at this, I probably should just quit out. Is this related to make it worse? And the doctors and stuff like that? Always losing track of time, don't give a fuck now. I thought I had it for a minute till she ducked out. I thought I had it for a minute till she snuck out. Then I struck out. I had it for a minute, then I lost it in a second. I just gave a couple years up to a girl to reinvest it. Now I'm right back where I started with a heart that's extra guarded and some feelings disregarded. I forgot how all this started, like for real. 
I just need a minute, baby, let me keep it real I'ma slip out of the function like a fucking Navy SEAL They ain't even know I'm here, they ain't even heard me speak I've been chilling by my lonely till the motherfucker peak I like the fact that we potentially got introduced to DMG with that line There, it's like, oh, there's someone else involved, that's dope mm -hmm, I think I'm about to mm -hmm. Who is this new voice? I'm about to mm -hmm, I think I'm about to I got ambition, I got everything you'd ask for I've been doing things that you ain't even asked for I'm doing so much, I don't think that you could have more I know I'm cold, but baby, what you got that mask for? I'm sick I'm coming down with something, I'ma make it quick, yeah Yeah, I'ma make it quick I know that you're bad for me, but you're the one I pick I don't know why I'm so bad at this, I probably should just quit I always luck out Always losing track of time, don't give a fuck now I thought I had it for a minute till she ducked out I thought I had it for a minute till she snuck out Then I struck out Love comes and goes That's what we're told we Double tracking? Or fold. I'll break the mold Cause I know I'm never better off alone Come on baby, won't you throw the stuck a bone? Let's turn our house to a home Oh, oh, oh And you are all I need I know that you can see That you're the one for me Hmm, I, I can see what we were trying to do With those vocals there I appreciate the note choices there The melodies and the harmonies there I liked how they resonate with one another if we could have just been a little bit tighter rhythmically with that first half of it, just the tiniest bit tighter, I think it would have had a good sort of bounce to it, which would have been really effective. It, the reason I say that is because it didn't sound like we were trying to soak our vocals in reverb or anything like that. So that infers that we're going to be a, so kind of like a more sort of, um, we're going to have more presence if that, if that makes sense, as opposed to be kind of like a misty kind of feature. It, it's, it's cool though. Like I understand what we were going for. I'm just being transparent. Okay. So I think that had it for a minute is about realizing that you had everything you were looking for potentially, and then it just let, let it, letting go of it or being running out of time with it or just losing it and you know when we talked about the lady kind of ducking out when he thought he had it for a minute it infers that basically he thought oh i've got it's, everything's good now better roses it's gonna be good forever and then it just it just wasn't things adapted like i get it you know like um oh how do i say this without being patronizing because i don't mean it like that like i'm 30 i'm gonna be 33 in a few days right i'm so i'm getting old <laughs> and i i listened to this and when i was 23 i remember losing someone that i was in a pretty serious relationship with and i i legitimately did not think i could recover from that at all i like i thought i had everything that i needed and then yeah it clearly just you, i i can relate to it personally i understand what we're going through with this what i will say is and not that Lando's living needs to hear this or that anyone really needs to hear it is that i think with some of the stuff we've been discussing this album about not really knowing ourselves trying to figure out who we are and stuff i don't think anybody really knows themselves when they're 23. you go through like several different identity shifts throughout your 20s and then i think basically people start to sort of like cement themselves and figure stuff out by the time they're in their 30s so just the things are pretty chaotic when you're in your 20s it's just it's part of life but that's not to diminish the, the situation that Landlo, Land, Lando is living is having with these people not being sort of faithful to him dealing with the people who aren't necessarily honest to him I am I'm impressed with the maturity talking about how much he cares about his family and friends and stuff like that I think that's wonderful and I appreciate that there doesn't appear to be any ill will towards these people it's just he realizes he had it and then just things were gone and that's that's just that moment in time and that makes me wonder what the next album is going to be about you know like where are we going to go from here are we going to go yeah, yeah it's it's difficult to talk about this without going on a tirade or a tangent but um e either way i think that the story was it was interesting the guitars um they had a nice calming um inoffensive presence to them we were finger picking strings there and arpeggiating guitar chords and it suits the genre well and stuff i'm very familiar with now from Lando is living 
I thought the DMG was a nice adjustment or a foil to Landor's Living's rapping. It was nice to have sung vocals there with harmonies. I thought it was great. We've got an, an interlude now titled What Are We Now? Uh, okay. Whoa. She said, The way you kiss me got me feeling like we back home. The way we used to sneak away and up them dirt roads And we risked it every time we finished arguing And I'd fix it even after all that happened with us I admit that I miss it, what are we now? I feel regret, but what good is that now? You're doing good and I'm spiraling Sorry, when I talked about not having triplets it's not vocals that were lacking the triplet flow. It was some of the instrumental parts. Down. You're turning up and I'm drowning it out. You're feeling fine and I'm figuring out that you post it up while I'm grinding it out. You post it up while I'm grinding it out, grinding it out. What are we now? I'll tell you what, girl, I know that I'm out. I got my pockets filled up with some doubts and plenty of hundreds. I'll figure it out. Just give me a minute to get this shit out. I gotta stop and smell all the flowers. Give up on that girl that I wasted them hours on. I got a chance to let all that shit go. I'm laying in bed, then I hear on my phone. There she go hitting me up again I can't escape, I think I'm out of luck again What's in my future if we end up kissing? I might find love, then I might just go missing Don't hit on my phone, you know I'm out here living It's right in my name, what you think I've been kidding? It's back to the hook like your boy just been fishing Well, we risked it every time we finished arguing And I'd fix it even after all that happened with us I admit that I miss it, what are we now? I feel regret, but what good is that now? You're doing good and I'm spiraling down You're turning up and I'm drowning it out You're feeling fine and I'm figuring now That you post it up while I'm grinding it out You post it up while I'm grinding it out Grinding it out What are we now? Oh, that was short Was that meant to be that long? Or was that meant to be shorter than this? Or longer than this? Interlude seemed like it kind of abruptly cut there I'm not sure if that was on purpose But, but either way you know, it's it's okay. What I liked about that track is there was this point where he talked about there being like silence and then you hear like a lady vocals, like a kind of a, a chop there. And then he talks about her hitting him up on the cell phone and that there is clever because that's basically saying, hey, look, it's the lady, it's that lady, you know, comes back into the life. And then boom, you know, he's back at it again. What are we now? I suppose it's discussing trying to figure out the situation between them and just you know what is this you know i had it for a minute it's like we thought it was what it is and then suddenly we that we bowed and then what are we now is coming back to that and going look, look what even is this i'm confused by it. like make it worse you get the feeling it's affecting and like seriously affecting him and this is not the first time i mentioned this throughout this album it's through a lot of it i'm starting to get a real kind of feel for what this album is about at this point potentially but, but either way, look, get, getting back to, to what are we now? It's a, it's a nice interlude. It, seem, it seems more like a song than an interlude, but that's me kind of being pedantic, I suppose. It could be a song on its own. It was nice to have the clicks and the filtered drums there and to allow things to flow occasionally. The cheeriness of the guitars belies, I suppose, the confusion that we have about our situation. But I also think that if we'd been too specific towards confusion with the chord choices and harmonies, it would have been a bit too on the nose, so I get it. Yeah, it's just that end part. It just seemed like it kind of ended a bit too bluntly for me. But it's still, I mean, we've got three tracks to go. It's been an incredible time. I've, I've actually kind of enjoyed this journey. It's been good. It's When I say kind of, it's because I understand that Lando's Loving has been going through some stuff. So I'm not super happy that he's had to go through it, but I do appreciate being able to hear about it. We got Convenient, track number 19. Really loving a guitars. Yeah. Call me back whenever is most convenient. Call me back whenever you think you're feeling down, 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 down. Call me back whenever is most convenient. Call me back whenever you're feeling down, 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 down. Careful, baby, you almost had lost your crown. I'm careful, baby, I'm trying to not let you down. I'm careful, baby, I'm trying to just stick around. So, careful, baby, I'm just trying to stick around. So, so I'm, 
I'm trying to figure out whether we're staying or we're going with this. We seem with convenient that we do actually want this person back in our life. So we've gone through periods where we don't want this person back at all. And then other times, is this a different person that we want back now? It's interesting. I'm trying to figure out whether these are like different moods we've been in and we've expressed them in song and put them as like a journey of our own sort of dealing with the situation. Like it's just like being tugged backwards and forwards by this person. Is it kind of inferring that we can't really decide what we want with this, despite the the the, the sort of effect it's having on us? Careful, baby, but never careful enough. I just make her happy, but then I go fuck it up. She said, it ain't you, but you'll never be good enough. I don't want no problems, you already showing up. Like, coming back whenever is most convenient. Coming back whenever you're feeling down. I would rather be by myself. I don't wanna see her. I'd rather be by myself. She don't do me right. If she fuck up up on my health, I've been losing options, but never give up myself. I won't oh. I've been going fucking crazy. Ain't nobody doing enough lately. Yeah, ain't nobody doing enough lately. Every day I'm waking up, I see my numbers up, baby. Yeah, and ain't nobody out there like me. In a different world, if 40,000, you can bite me for real. Okay, so this second half of the track took a turn, didn't it? I wasn't expecting that, that's fascinating. We got some country is kind of slidey stuff going on. Yeah, okay, let's let's have a talk about this because I've been noticing something interesting with like country and hip hop recently. We seem to have gotten to this place where country is incorporating some of the rap and hip hop instruments like the trap drums and stuff like that and the eight oh eights and such. And now we've got like country slides and stuff like that in hip hop music. And it's getting to a point where like I'm f I I just when I was like when I was 23, it was so just not a thing. You either had acoustic drums and stuff like that with country music, and you didn't have any of that country stuff in the hip hop, but it's like, we're now starting to, it's like the whole, like back in the mid 2000s, emo and hip hop were not a thing that came together. And then at some point we started putting a lot of the emo stuff into hip hop with like sad hip hop and stuff like that. We're getting these fusions of genres now that are just things that I would never have expected just because of how polarizing they are. But it's almost like they needed some people to come in and be like, hey, no, this is what it sounds like. Give it a chance. And it's like when they actually played with the different tools and made different fun noises, you basically have what we have now, which is we've got like rap with like auto tune and stuff like that, or meta tune mixed with the 808s, the kind of trapish kind of drums with like the clicks and the kicks and the hi hats, with like slide guitars and the cute little lead guitar, single coil arpeggios and, and 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 motifs. It's it's riffs. It's kind of it's kind of I think the, the epitome of what music is supposed to be, where it just you just make stuff that sounds good to you, regardless of the you know the the, the expectations of the genre. But I'm just pointing that out simply for like transparency. It does. It, it, it's a pleasant surprise to see how open-minded people have become but i think convenient is going through this the the starting phase of oh yeah no i need this person i'm trying to treat them like a queen etc then, then realizing actually no hey no this person's been treating me like garbage they have not been honest and i'm sick of this and i'm sick of how it's affecting my health and everything like that and i want to get past this and actually live my life properly so i like that i like i was i was gonna get it was getting me for a moment i was like hang on are we really is this the same album like is this the same situation but no, we're fine. I get it now. It's cool. The last two tracks, though, of this album, we've got Little Things featuring Kieran, as well as uh, the final track, which we'll get to in a minute. But let's watch Little Thing. Little, Little Thing. There we go. I I have that keyboard. I for real. I have that keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm pretty sure that's the same one. I've just taken a photo over there. I'm pretty sure that's the same keyboard. That's dope, and I like that. Okay, let's go. They said that I can do it. I said, tell me why not? I've been running for a minute around the clock. Stop watch. Jumping around these stages like I'm playing hopscotch. Turn me up like all the way I'm feeling top notch. I've been making music. Everybody wants to know. Oh, it loaded again. Never mind. We're good. How that stuff been going? How you doing your little show? How that little music thing? How that one beat go? You know, that one song that you made a while ago. Honestly, it's so old. I wish that you would follow me. Because all my songs been hitting lately. That one's an anomaly. I've been going crazy lately. Go and check my following. And then go hit that notifying. No need for apologies. For real. You asked me how I'm doing, but you already know the deal. At least you should if you were on my Spotify. For real. Checking in for real. Supporting me for real Y'all don't even know him But the stats gonna keep it real I can see where every single stream comes from If your city ain't up in there Then we done done If I ain't up in your playlist Then we done 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 I like the um, the acoustic drums that we have here. I think they're splendid. It's nice to have that tone there, a little bit sort of more grounded and earthy, a bit of extra kind of edge to it there. It's it's nice to have that adjustment there to have a different sound at this point of the album. Yeah, 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 we done. Yeah, 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 we done. Yeah, 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 we done. So done, so done, so done. They said that I can do it. I said, tell me why not? I've been running for a minute around the clock. Stop watch. Jumping around these stages like I'm playing hopscotch. Turn me up like all the way I'm feeling top notch. I've been making music everybody wants to know. How that stuff been going? How you doing your little show? How that little music thing? How that one beat go? You know, that one song that you made a while ago. Honestly, it's so old. I wish that you would follow me. Cause all my songs been hitting lately. That one's an anomaly. I've been going crazy lately. Go and check my following. And then go hit that notifying. No need for apologies. Way back then, nobody believed in me. I needed some relief, barely went about three innings But it's all good for me, we only in the beginning We threw some shit at the wall, just to see what was sticking Gotta take a shot, Parents man. don't understand, I ain't talking the fresh prints Running toward the paper, bills made from fresh print Too many nights I had to hope, then dream and then wish People want me to crumble, then collapse and then quit But look how big I'm doing with this little thing Haters nowadays do not pay me any mind Only get right under me just a little bit But really I don't wanna go and waste my fucking time Crazed by my back, they say I'm trash but give me compliments They wonder why I'm extra and exude all this confidence I'm climbing out the hole, reach the surface, make it obvious I'm trying to reach the sky, climb the tree of life to get on top of it Keep talking, keep walking, no one gon' stop me Keep rapping, keep joking, want to end the pop Doing shit. Ready to take a shot, then they might just Tupac me I swear my life a movie, roll with the punches like Rocky Roll with the punches like Rocky So this is about talking about how that little thing's turned into a big thing, right? Or is it about another person's little thing? But again, uh, finishing on Karen's uh, motif, that's cool, man I do, I like this Stop and smell, smell the flowers. Nice, the the album. I like this. It was cool to listen to um, Kieran's uh, verse as well as uh, Lando is living. You you get the feeling that um, they're really looking at their own success here after convenience and focusing on their careers and acknowledging the growth they've made and numbers and stuff like that and finding success. And I think it is basically all the people that thought that they couldn't succeed going, well, look at this, look at the numbers I've got on Spotify and stuff like that. You know, feel free to follow me and no need for apologies. You know, we're bigger than that. I, I think that the upbeat nature of the guitar parts here with the strums and the kind of garage band drums and the bass there, that, that were nice, that, that, that was a smart kind of choice here tonally, I think, because it infers a sense of positivity and, or, and a very organic kind of feeling of having, making it, if that makes sense, that Lando's living in and Kieran have. I, I, li I, do, I like the theme here, it makes sense to me, and other times we've had these kind of major or more neutral backings, and it's been like, okay, this theme that we have here, we're talking about this, but this is a lot more kind of like it's trying to smooth it out, which is fine, but but very occasionally it's like, does this, do these connect? Do they have a sense of synergy there? With this one, I get it. You know, we're feeling pretty pumped and happy about how things are going, so it's cool. But we have a Yellow Stoned now, the final track of this album featuring Reister. So let's go. Yeah. Yellow Stone. 
I'm feeling hella stoned. I got one blunt gone and got another rolled. I got hella hoes, I got hella bros. I got one main bitch, we gotta trust like gold. Valuable but malleable, she's still my hoe. She got a big fat ass, but her heart made of stone. She give me two pissed off, she got me mad to the bone. She tell me go and find another her, I'll find your clone. Valuable but malleable, I bet that shit. I got a shorty on the side, but we share that bitch. She like girls, woo. I like girls too. What you think about this shorty? We can share food, we can catch a bite. We can catch a vibe too, turning up all night. We can catch a ride too, anywhere we like. And shorty like it's shareable, so we don't have to fight. If shorty ain't too careful, we gon' do this shit to Yellowstone, I'm feeling hella stoned. I got one blunt gone and got another rolled. I got hella hoes, I got hella bros. I got one main bitch, we gotta trust like gold. Valuable but malleable, she's still my hoe. Is it the video? She got a big fat ass, but her heart made of stone. She give me two pissed off, she got me mad to the bone. She tell me go and find another her, I'll find your clone. I'll find another one of you. Christ her. With no issue. So baby, don't worry about me now. Cause baby, I still hate you. Cause you did things to me that I just can't forget. Yeah, you Is this like very, very present? Like a Reister's vocal is a lot louder in the mix than Lando's. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, so I I think Reister's vocals in this were a lot more present than than um, Lando is living. Trust like gold, valuable but malleable. She's still my hoe. She got a big fat ass, but her heart made of stone. She give me two pissed off. She got me mad to the bone. She tell me go and find another her. I'll find your clone. I'll find another one of you. Like if we uh, because I, I don't want to patronize anyone here. Like so, the mixing and this mastering of this album has been for the most part been fantastic. I'm just wondering if we mixed this in both stereo and mono. Just so we could hear how it sounded both in the center and with sides. Filmed on iPhone. Oh, good on you, man. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I like that. That's that's really nice. Because it kind of ties back for Lando's living and what he's talking about with like his dad. And now he has like appreciation for his family and everything like that. It's cool. Sincerely, I think it's dope. Um, it's just a shame again about the mixing um, with uh, Reister's parts. Because I thought that if Reister was just a little bit lower in the mix, like the way that we handled the the Yellowstone, like the, the pain and the vo vocal performance is very believable, right? There's a lot of uh, tension there and sadness that is being communicated there. It's very authentic. So... I, I I just yeah it's it's a great foil to Landor's Living's vocal parts as well in the chorus and and in the verse parts, and uh, yeah I think we it's it's nice it's it's a nice song that uh, talks about the struggle we're going through after having dealt with that person who we're really attracted to we just cannot get it to work and I suppose that that's kind of sobering that's the end of the album that's what we're we're ending it on as being Yellowstoned at the end. Just kind of trying to find a way of moving forward for after we had that experience with this person in the journey we've gone through. That's that is the the ending of it with a familiar guitar motif there, maybe some synth pads and stuff in there, very occasional like light layers there with the bass and drums that we've had throughout. Like I I know I seem like I'm generalizing the bass and drums at this point. It's simply because I feel like we're very comfortable with the instruments in that range there. They they perform specific functions where they sp stay with those roots when they're there with the bass. And the drums, we either have the kicks and like the claps and stuff like that, or we have like just the hi hats, or we just have like kind of filter parts without as much high or low end on them. But with that said, aside from the comments about like the levels of Reister's vocals, I think again, great choice for a collaborator. Uh, we're going to talk about this album more in the conclusion. Because welcome to the conclusion of my review of this album from an act named Lando is Living titled Stop and Smell the Flowers. Now, this has been a long video, so thank you to all of you who have watched this the whole way. Um, it's an interesting album. What I think the album is about, 
outside of what I've spoken about with the individual tracks with each of their 21 conclusions uh, I think that this album is basically about Landor's living trying to affirm their place in the world deal with the difficulties of their relationships both the good and the good times and the bad times finding worth within themselves finding gratitude for their family there you know dealing with the fact that people have baggage and you don't have to always deal with that um having more than one person at the same time and enjoying the fruits of labor you know um bay city the rappers around the area living in the place they're living in and having to move and kind of make their life up etc and then i think little thing at the end is looking at the progress we've made and looking where we are now and looking back on the people who thought we'd never get anywhere and being like well we clearly have i mean look at all the people that lando was living uh worked with they were overdrive hashi dopest as well as um jimmy hooks who did the production for a lot of these tracks uh, with, with Dunsey as well featured Koi, Trevor Dean, DMG and Karen there, there are a lot of featured musicians and I'm really happy with all the features and I think that Jimmy Hook did a fantastic job with the production but just the story itself I think it's 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 mostly relatable I'm sure a lot of people listening to this will be able to sort of understand the trials and tribulations or be able to sort of like compare it to their own and it's nice to be able to hear this from Lando is living for them to open up further for us to kind of get to know them better and to hear their story with the understanding that most of the clean vocals that we had in here from musicians such as overdrive and 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 reister were, were good um you know despite some of the leveling issues i think that the, any singer or any feature vocalist who came into this track had an if, intent on, of what they were doing they had a piece of the puzzle that they were allowed and for the most part, they added something to the mix in a way that was really, really positive. They added a nice foil or like extra angle to what Lando was Living was providing. And for the most part, Lando was Living, it was mostly rapping with choruses that were very familiar to me from other albums because we have found, I think, a niche that we're happy in with the way that we rap those verses. We're very clear with our words. We're very polished. There is no, I have no issues with the way that we, we verbalized or communicated there. We sound professional and it's a really capable, confident performance for someone who's, again, with their, th their third album, if I'm not mistaken, they just, they, they know what they want to do and accomplish. They tell the stories the way they need to. They, they understand, you know, X amount for a verse, X amount for a chorus. And some tracks had a few uh, hook lines, which we did quite a bit of. We understood the power of having a solid ver hook line but there was a bit of you know like the verses were great when we had them for the explanation there i'm not sure if i entirely understand the transfer between through the album like it seemed like at some points we really were toing and throwing between this person we were enamored with sometimes we were like very happy with them even dependent on them other times we like felt like we couldn't live without them other times we were completely just sick of their their garbage and in some tracks such as um convenient i think if i'm not mistaken we we completely go from one to the other quite like quite aggressively you know from like wanting to treat this person like a queen to immediately being like i'm sick of i'm sick of this stuff it, it i guess stop and smell the flowers would be coming to terms with the reality situation here but in terms of vocal performance and rapping lando's living was absolutely top notch i i appreciate the way we phrased our bars there i don't think we could have done anything differently to improve it I think that if anything, it's like to do with a, a saw, like an actual motif production thing. Not that it was done badly, but I'll talk about that when we get there. It's a situation where with the vocals handled well, I think we had a relative neutrality with a lot of it. There was like a part where like it was had it for a minute or make it worse. It was a track where we spoke to the listener. We just talked about who we were grateful for, like for our family and the people that supported us and throughout the two albums and stuff like that. That was one of the realest parts of this entire album. And I liked with like Montana Magic, the previous album, if I'm not mistaken, we came in and we talked to the listener in like the intros and some of the interlude parts. I think it was very personable. It made it seem like you were actually being attended to by Lando's Living whilst you were listening to it. I liked that because when, when, when there's a lot of rapping going on, you're being spun a story. But to break that and just kind of have a conversation or just make an admission or something in a different tone is, is dope. It's really good. So we had a bit of that here. I suppose that sounds kind of fractured, but like really, I, I don't know how we could have improved the rapping. I think that I, it's, it's difficult for me to specifically note like differences between each of the featured vocalists. Like feel free to check out the conclusions per track of my thoughts on how they did. I think that my favorite track off of this album is I'm Done. 
featuring Koi. Now, the reason that it is my favorite track off the album is for what we're going to talk about next, which is the actual tracks themselves, right? Because if we can rap well, and if we can sing well, and if we've got clean vocalists, featured artists who are working with like the meta tune stuff that that Lando's Living is doing, as well as some of the less kind of more cleaner stuff, uh, more straightforward stuff, should I say? If we've got melodic and harmonic foils to that vocally and an added extra added to storytelling, we, we have the tracks at two to three or four minutes. And there, that's long enough in terms of like, I don't think we could have improved the experience by adding more to those tracks. We told the stories that we needed to. And for the vast majority of the time, they were structured really eloquently. We had instrumental breaks for some parts there, which extended for like 30 seconds at some point. I think it might have been um, one of the tracks like Resistance or something like that. Like one of the tracks had like a 30 second intro with just the guitar parts. It was great. No, I don't think it was Resistance. I think it was a three minute track. It might have been that, uh, oh man, I'm not sure. I, I like that we didn't rush through sections though. We, we had parts where we would allow the guitar or the bass or the drums to sit or some of the vocal chops or some of the keys or some of the synths, etc. I liked um, almost there with the interlude with Overdrive singing with the piano parts. I thought that was absolutely tremendous there. I liked songs where we went away a little bit from what we were familiar with, with like the trappish drums and the bass and the lo-fi guitar aesthetic there to have more of a free form like piano sort of solo a bit with Overdrive's vocals in there. I thought that was really cool. That was something kind of unique within this album as well as I'm Done with Koi with the absolute frenetic guitar playing like the guitar riff that we had and i'm done was absolutely superb just the tapping and the fluidity of the slides and the hammer on parts there it was an impressive guitar riff like an impressive piece of instrumentation that for me excelled because not only was the were the vocals done really well but also the actual the instrumental performance was was stellar it was pushing the instruments as well as the vocals in a way where they both excelled and it was also the fun tones of the instruments there like the big kind of kind of fuzzy synths and stuff the, the punchiness of the drums the, there was even more energy from lando's living as well as koi in those ones there they were full and vibrant and i liked how energetic everything was inside i'm done i'm understand the not i understand not every single track would have benefited from being as musically or instrumentally busy as i'm done was but at the same time, I just had a more interesting time with it. It's not to say I don't appreciate the aesthetic of, again, the lo-fi guitar, because with the in terms of the instruments, you had like guitars, typically they were either sort of clean steel strings with like picked up arpeggios or hammer-on notes there, or maybe there was very little strumming. It was usually arpeggiated stuff. You had some lead guitar parts here with a little bit of cleanliness with like, the lead, like a little bit of misty reverb to lay on them and such. And that, we had some country kind of slide guitar parts there there were some interesting major arpeggio riffs there and there, there were lots of different either extended harmonies like with the melodies or harmonies with like the major or minors or we had some just pure sort of major stuff occasionally sometimes things were a little bit sad something we never had any harsh textures or anything that came across from the bass where the bass was typically rolling with those root notes and creating sort of this ground bed where it was cl very clean with the 808s there there was a bit of fuzziness occasionally but nothing too ruthless or aggressive sticking with those root notes or those chords the drums Typically, there was eighths, um, quarters, or sixteenths. There's sixteenths are some of the hi hat parts, as well as some of the offbeat kicks and snares. We often had this pattern of like having full bore kind of kick uh, claps or like um, snare patterns with with hi hats, and then we take away the kicks and allow things to float a bit, and then maybe have some filtered sort of like kicks or like snares or whatever, and then come back in with the full force. So we had that kind of loop, that really satisfying pattern with the percussion throughout the vast majority of the tracks. Again, we didn't always have percussion we didn't always even have guitar necessarily sometimes we had piano sometimes we had like the piano solo and and almost there was just absolutely stellar i really appreciated that the range we had there with the right hand exploring not only the arpeggios and the triads there but also gradually going with a lot of tension in there it was like a theatrical performance there with the left hand providing a nice bit of extra context there on the low end and, and you had free form. We were staying away from a solid, solid tempo there. It was very expressive and unpredictable and human. I think with a lot of the tracks within this album, even though they fit well within the genre of what we've got here, they may not have been as interesting to me as Almost There or even Koi because of the fact that I feel like with those two tracks, there was just more. 
there was more than the, the again the familiarity of a lot of the rest of the tracks where like even though i think musically and again this is not I'm not saying that jimmy hooks didn't do a good job i think jimmy hooks did a fantastic job producing these especially if he was involved in the mixing and mastering the production was was stellar it's just that i'm greedy and i want more and i think that I'm hoping that if, if Lando is Living does another album, I'm hoping we do more stuff like I'm Done or Almost There, where we kind of make it more of like a big kind of adventure. I know that that might not sell as well. And we might want like more kind of like it's restrained stuff because I can see that little thing in Yellowstone go like a collective 100k views, but maybe, maybe I just don't have a pulse on the genre. But as a listener to all sorts of genres of music and as a reviewer, I want musicians I work with to push themselves further. We can rap really well. I want production in the next album to to really push the boundaries of the individual instruments themselves and get even more fun tones and even more fun ideas and really kind of, or even have just silence or space, you know? That's another thing I appreciated from Montana Magic where we had just had moments where you could just hear the birds and stuff like that. There was moments of like peace and calm and you were allowed to just sit there with it and just kind of, kind of gaze into the world, that, you know, through your ears that they're trying to create. I wasn't always sure about how the guitar riffs matched, like with the themes and stuff like that, with what was going on with the um, the vocals and the stories there. I think a lot of the time we had major and minor chords and they were neutral enough, as I've said, neutral, like that, they were platonic enough to be able to be flexible enough with both. And I also, as I've said throughout this review, understand that it's about trying to find a place where it's both meaningful to the lyrics and finding connection between the instruments as well as the vocals, but also at the, the music, it needs to be like i don't know like it needs to be that kind of sound that people are sort of familiar with in order for it to not be too alienating and to be able to sort of relate to it it's, it's finding a way to find a sense of uniqueness which again with tracks like almost there and and i'm done i think we were getting there for sure and, and, and again it's not me saying that these tracks went where i wouldn't they were it's just again in this music industry there is just so much competition and lando is living Again, we've polished our rapping vocals. We're finding great featured artists to work with. It's making every single track as just totally intriguing as I'm done and almost there for me. It's making each of them like that without fail. I mean, okay, maybe maybe have like a third of the track what we have now with the existing guitar, bass, and drum motifs as well as some of the synth patterns and vocal chops. That's fine. But I'd say it needs to probably be 50-50. But outside of how I feel about things not necessarily connecting all the time, I think ultimately it's a situation with this album where clearly we had a vision, we wanted to stay within a genre that we were intent with, we understood occasionally there needed to be extensions within the core progressions there, the overall colorations of them were very satisfying. We had a fundamental understanding of music theory and composition. I think to be fair to Jimmy Hooks, we were trying to create themes that were more musically accessible, so it's, it's totally fine. I'm glad we took some risks. I think that overall it was a mature album with enough in it to be able to relate to previous works of Lando is Loving whilst also trying to show a glimpse of what could be in future projects. So I look forward to that, you know. The studio recording, mixing and mastering. I, I liked that. I thought that we handled ourselves really well there. The vocals for the most part, apart from Yellowstone, were nicely able to mix. I just think Reister's were just too loud. I'm not sure if that's going to be the same case in the album version. I really hope it isn't. It's just, it's just too much. I, I'm not usually as uh stoic on that but like absolutely if that is the same as in the youtube upload it's too much i think that the guitars bass drums pianos synths keys etc um the vocal chops were nicely leveled in the frequency spectrum with no weird resonant frequencies for the most part things are nice and wide in the stereo field there were little music box thingies as well as like bird sounds and foley and stuff like that the use of panning was effective as well as the use of soundscapes again like the birds to kind of invoke a sense of peace and stuff like that and nat nature and serenity uh things were nice and loud there was, like, there was dynamic range to this track things were not the same loudness all the time the use of meta tuning and stuff like that on lando's living's vocals as well as other people in the in the album were additive and did not diminish the experience i know that the people who were singing could sing without the meta tune not that i've got the right to judge anyways but like i understand they could just really sing so it was a it was it was a thing to kind of make it a you you know more if that makes sense and it's nice and loud without pumping the music in general so the us compression limiting was handled. I mean, effectively, this is my review of this album from an act named Lando is Living. Thought I'd stop and smell the flowers, and hopefully you enjoy it. If you did, please do go show them some love via their various social medias and Spotify page, and stay cool, stay safe, and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time, as either help more than ever thought of crazy stuff going on in the world, and I will catch you 
in the next review. Spider Hands out.